Hey, welcome back here once again, the 46th Annual Intercollegiate Mining Competition in Butte, Montana. We have hand steel going as we speak, as we took a little bit of a lunch break. Everybody kind of getting back after it here. And let's give you the schedule here. This is Friday, so we have women's co-ed and alumni are underway. And let me get my schedule out here. And as we look at the steel as of right now, two alumni teams, the South Dakota alumni team and the Missouri Tater Patch alumni team, both on the hand steel as we speak. And you also see our sponsors up there. Uh, this is totally made possible by all of those, the events and everything else. And, of course, Epi Rock uh, sponsoring our stream here today. But uh, certainly takes a lot of help. And anyone or any campus that has uh, put one of these on, uh, through the run, uh, certainly know the work that uh, is entailed. And I'll tell you, our Montana Tech mining team have done so much work. The grounds look so good. And everybody just having an outstanding event thus far. A lot of teams been here for a couple days. We have talked to some of our sponsors. We have talked to some of our teams. And we will continue to do so for the remainder of the day today and all day tomorrow as well. So, again, thanks for joining us here as a hand steel Underway, South Dakota alumni, Missouri Tater Patch. We do have other activity getting slated to go here. As we get rolling into this 12.30 time slot, the Arizona Midnight Meat Train is scheduled to go in the gold panning to my immediate left. That starts uh, as of right now. Also, we have mucking underway here at 12.30. The Montana Banquet Brigade is an alumni team. They're scheduled to go. Also, Camborn's women's team uh, will be mucking for time. That coming up uh, as we speak. We'll keep an eye on that as we go. Uh, otherwise, uh, Swede saw Arizona Mother Muckers, a women's team, and the Wasson Wallabies women's team are scheduled to go in the Swede saw. And... Uh, I'm not going to lie, I was in our trailer getting things set up, and I, I loved to look over, and it looked like both teams were kind of playing to the camera, which is just the best. Uh, other activity here, jack leg. The Arizona Cobras, a co-ed team, will go with the jack leg here when it gets restarted. Track stand, Nevada, Nevada Mucky, uh, the, excuse me, the Nevada Mackey Muckers will get going, as will the Queensland Magpies on the track stand. And then, as I mentioned, hand steel we have on the uh, screen as we go. You see the Swede saw down in the right corner as well. And we are under here for the uh, afternoon session, if you will, of our intercollegiate mining competition here in Butte, Montana. Women, co-ed, and alumni today. The men are uh, out in the surveying field. <clears throat> we'll swap. The men will be here. The women, co-ed, uh, and the alumni will take over uh, with the uh, surveying tomorrow as the men will be, men's teams will be rolling here. Boy, great pace here with the hand steel to start. And we'll swap here to our Swede saw. Again, our two teams here on the Swede saw. we get you those, the Arizona Mother Muckers, the women's team, and also the Wasson Wallabies as they get ready to hand off. Man, look at that. It's like a burrito right in the right side of the corner of the screen. That's just rude. I'm still kind of hungry. Good pace with the saw. Everybody kind of took an immediate break and went and relaxed for a few minutes, and now we're starting to see the pace get back up here as we get ready for our third. Swede saw, each team is allowed five participants to compete in the Swede saw competition using two bow saws. Members of each team will saw through a six inch by six inch timber. Each member is given a four inch area to cut and cannot have a deviation greater than one and one half inch. Team is complete. Uh, they have to complete all five cuts in the shortest amount of time. And the team that does that is the winner. Of course, a lot of history with the Swede saw as well. In early underground mines, timbers were used as the main source of ground support to ensure that excavated areas would not collapse. Timbers were cut by hand to fit the areas where they were needed. Most effective methods of ground support are used today, and timbers are rarely seen in modern underground mines. 
But of course, if you take the underground mine tour uh, at the World Museum of Mining, a whole lot of exposed timber still there. We can hear the jack leg starting to get go, and there you hear, see it up in the top right corner. So in the jack leg, as of right now, it looks like the Arizona Cobras. And by the shirt, that looks like that's the case. So the Arizona Cobras are on the jack leg. The hand steel. South Dakota alumni and Missouri Tater Patch are there. And of course, Swede Saw is rolling still. So a lot of competition back underway here in Butte, Montana. Ladies getting after it here. The lunch crowd starting to make their way back out into our competition grounds. As again, we are on the campus of Montana Tech and just outside the World Museum of Mining, as they mentioned, if you're going to come up, World Museum of Mining, free entry today and tomorrow, in case you're wondering. Uh, but uh, we have activities back rolling here. You see the Swede saw on your big screen, and we're down on the other side. Actually, we just switched over to Jack Leg here. I was going to say we were down on the other side of the grounds. We have uh, the farthest one away from us as we currently stand 
uh, is mucking. Steel is out, or rather the track stand is out there as well. And we'll keep you updated on those here as the jack leg you see getting ready to roll in the bottom right of your corner. And it looks as though the Arizona ladies, let's see what we have here as far as sweet saw goes. Yeah, the mother muckers, the Arizona mother muckers look like they're about ready to roll there. They're the far team as you look at your main screen as they are now underway. So the Arizona Mother Muckers, five ladies, women's team out of the University of Arizona. And they are underway in the Swede Saw. We have Jack Leg in the bottom right corner. We take a look at our schedule, who that is. The Arizona Cobras, that's co-ed team. As activity back rolling. Again, thanks for joining us here on the YouTube page. We will have full activity again tomorrow, and we're going to do the same format. We'll kind of break the day up at lunch. We'll go ahead and give our machines a chance to breathe for a minute. We'll reset them, and we'll just restart the stream. So if you're with us tomorrow, just remember there will be two separate streams. So after before lunch, just go ahead and back out and rejoin us. And again, the same thing goes here today. We have a great list of sponsors that make this possible for us locally, but all these teams have an incredible list of sponsors that made it possible for them to travel here uh, and join us as well. And we're going to be talking to some of our industry sponsors, some of our team captains, and a whole lot more as we continue. So thanks for joining us. As we take uh, an interest here on the mucking side of things. Mucking, I show the Montana Banquet Brigade, an alumni team here in Montana. And also the Camborn women's team is what is the case. So as the muckers getting ready to roll there, jack leg back going as well. That's the Cobras out of Arizona. As we take a look at the muckers here underway, the two teams out there right now here on the near side is the Montana Banquet Brigade. On the far side, uh, we have a women's team. The uh, Camborn team is there, and we'll give uh, an explanation. We have Montana Tech students explaining each of the events. Let's hear about uh, the mucking side of things. So this is mucking. Uh, the goal of the event is to fill an ore cart full of material. Uh, what, you have to push it down empty and then you have to push it down full once the cart is full. 
Uh, the rules kind of are there is a women's line that is about the middle of the cart, and then the men have to fill it all the way to the top. You have three shovelers and then two screeders. So your two screeders make sure all the material stays in the cart as well as they level it off. The PPE required are is hard hats, safety glasses, gloves. So um, if you hit the cart too hard on your way down and it comes off the rail, it's an instant disqualification. You do not want that to happen. It did happen to our team last year in Australia. Um, as well as only two shovels can be in the muck pile at once. Hey, welcome back here once again to Butte, Montana, the 46th annual intercollegiate mining competition underway. We have mucking on the full screen. We've got Jack Leg up in the right side. Uh, and I have uh, somebody else joining me, sir. Will you introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name's Marx. It's from the Wars and Wallabies. We're from Perth, WA, uh, Australia. It's happy to be here. I think you just need to come with me everywhere I go and just talk for me. That'd be great if you don't mind. Uh, I'm willing to stay and have a chat. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the journey here first. How long does it take you and the team? How big of a team, first and foremost? Yeah, so we got a full men's team of six and a full women's team of six as well. So Outstanding. There's 12 of us in total, and I'm the coach. Okay. So there's 13 of us in total. Uh, it took of us about maybe 24 hours of journey. So we flew in from Perth to Sydney. Sydney to San Fran, and then San Fran to Bozeman, and then drive all the way up here. Outstanding. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being here and, and being a part of the games. Yeah, it's nice, to, uh, it's nice having you guys host this, and it's been a very wonderful event so far. Is it your first time to Butte? Uh, yeah. Is it's it? It's my first time at Butte, but this would be my fifth uh, games? internationals, yeah. Okay. So where, where, other, where else have you been as far as the, the games go? Uh, I've competed in 2017 at Kentucky, 2018 at Campbell, and 2019 at Nevada. Okay. And at last year at Kalgoorlie, it's 20, uh, 2023. And then this one's my coaching role, I guess. Oh, so what uh, is the coaching hat different? I mean, do you, do you feel a sense of responsibility? Uh, uh, or are you still uh, just one of the guys? Uh, it, it feels <laughs> like I'm just still one of the guys. You Good know, you. like some of these guys are like my friends from school as well. So, yeah. like, a lot of it comes of just like getting that understanding and more deeper experience, especially when it comes to like the small tips and tricks when it comes to certain events, you know, yeah. like. Like for in track, there's some certain things that some teams do, then you want to apply it to your thing, but also keep the team sort of together as well. Okay. That's sort of like life of a coach, I guess. All right. Good on you. I, I mean, I was trying to, I, I was giving you a hard time, and yeah, you took that serious, and I appreciate that. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's brilliant. I mean, there is a, you know, there's a ceremonial part of that, but obviously you're here to help, and you take that very serious. Yeah, it's part of the, um, I guess, the alumni thing, culture we have in the, uh, in, WA for uh, the Wasm community. Okay. We have a very strong alumni community that uh, comes down to help out um, every event, for sponsorship runs, networking events. Um, Boy, that's important yeah. to have that alumni and those people that are going to stick around and help and grow yeah. the program. Uh, to have that as a uh, as a fallback pad, that's, that's awfully important. Yeah, it's very important, especially when um, students need to find a way in terms of career or even in just like in life as well. Like yeah. having alumni come down, just have a chat. It's completely like if over beers, over like more formal events. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very important to have, and it's just like a driving force to make everyone continue the culture that moving forward for the like later generations and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, that idea. I mean, it, you have to have that base even from an academic side where everybody is going to have trouble in school. And, and to have somebody there to lean on and go, you know what, guess what? Like sophomore year was hell for me too. Like, I, I'm sorry, you'll get through it. Everything yeah. is good. To have that in, in every respect is fantastic. Yeah, it's been very good. I've had the guys. Uh, I'm a geology major. Okay. Um, a lot of the guys in our team is also part of geology. And it's just making sure that they're all okay, helping out. As our sophomore year, sophomore year is pretty intense as well. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, just making sure that these guys are all, like, we you know, well, like, 
having the most relaxed mindset coming into the games as well because right now we're still in like university like you know some of these guys have assessments coming up yeah they're going to be doing exams essays like over the course of this week so just making sure that these guys are comfortable well rested mentally prepared and also physically prepared for the games as well what's uh, what do the games mean to you obviously as, as someone who has competed in them now coaching in them what what do they mean to you personally i think um the big factor was about the whole safety thing about like what you know the incident that happened back then uh, but it's also just like mateship I think just that's the culture. Like, you know, some of these guys here, some of the alumni that's here, I've met them from back in the day as well. So yeah. it's been very good to see them as well, some familiar faces. But it's just, um, it's a good way to network, even like internationally. And like, I've met some guys from Camborne that's now working in WA. Some of the guys um, working in Sydney now that they used to compete in like Kentucky. Yeah. And it was very good. Like, I think it's just more like keeping it, even though we're so far away from each other, it's like still like a big family at the end of the day, like, yeah. that's what the mining games mean to me. I, I love the fact that so the, it feels like every program I have talked to already here this morning, and I, I've got a, a good chunk of them, that family word continually keeps coming up, yeah. and, and it, 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 it certainly strikes a chord. Yeah, for sure, because, um, you know, like, it's not every day that you get to, you know, chill with the guys and meet, um, you know, lo very lovely people, and you guys compete together. You know, you have, like, trials and tribulations together, and you all go travel. You know, enjoy the States and you join, uh, like, Australia or join England. It's just a very good time just to, like, be, like, together, celebrate, and just yeah. have fun. What's, uh, so for the Wallabies, what, what are the events you have to win? You know, I mean, as, as far as personal <laughs> pride goes. Um, so our favorite event is the hand steal, but we had that first thing in the morning, so. Okay. It was very cold. Not everyone was really warmed up, but I think we did pretty all right. Okay. Um, that's what we like doing the most. That's our favorite event. Um, hopefully we did. Pretty well. Uh, we'll probably have to check the board later, and then uh, hopefully we did. But at the end of the day, we're just here to have fun, enjoy right. the moment, and, you know, for the girls, it's, uh, it's like their first ever international, so they're really That's just enjoying fantastic. the moment. Yeah, but good the for But the elevation's really killing them, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to bring that up, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, so the, uh, the elevation, uh, do you feel it pretty hard? Oh, man, like, as someone who's competed in, like, you know, four different times, like, it was it's rough it, is it the idea of especially uh almost like endurance is that where you feel it the idea of trying to get enough air is it, it, yeah. in a hand steal that last minute probably is awful um, i mean no matter how like how often you train in australia like let's say you do a three minute steal like full on 100 percent, your two minutes here feels like 150 percent, and it's just like it's a struggle but in the same time like it's also the weather it's pretty cold yeah but, like, you could sort of see last year, like, when it was in Kalgoorlie, like, all the Australian teams were like, oh, this is easy. Like, you know, it's summer. <laughs> it's, it was so warm, nice and hot. <laughs> Meanwhile, the American teams were a bit struggling with the yeah, I think everybody was dying, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, like, you know, us Aussies just need to, like, dig deep sometimes, you know. Like, it's the home turf for the you guys as well, so it's like... Yeah. You gotta make sure that we bring the A game as well. <laughs> good for you. Well, I, I appreciate your time. I won't keep you anymore. Thank you so much Thanks for being for here. Me. And uh, good luck. Thank you so much. Well, again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the 46th International Combining Competition is underway. We have uh, a track stand underway. We'll take a look at the teams that are out and a whole lot more. Stay close. So as we take a look at track right now, we have two co-ed teams out. We have uh, the Nevada Mackie Muckers, which my Polish mind has a real tough time saying real fast, and the Queensland Mama Magpies as those two teams on the track stand right now. And again, thanks for joining us here as uh, this broadcast made possible by EpiRock. EpiRock stepping up. Uh, and making sure we're able to stream the games here from the Mining City. And we'll have it uh, throughout the remainder of the day today and all day tomorrow as well here on the Montana Tech YouTube channel.
Hey, welcome back here once again. Is track stand on your screen? We have uh, Jack Leg up in the right corner. And, of course, you see Epi Rock in the bottom right there making it possible for us to stream this uh, day today, day tomorrow as well. And uh, we uh, welcome you. We are all corners. We've been talking to some of our Aussie friends, uh, and we get one, our first, from England. Sir, if you'll introduce yourself, if you don't mind, we'll go from there. Yeah, hi. Um, good to be on here. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's nice to be here, you know, not being competing today. So I can take a slow one. A little okay, chill. Yeah. Uh, give me your name first and, and who you represent, and let's go from there. Yeah, so I'm uh, Joseph McCarthy. I'm the uh, the men's team captain this year for, for Camborne. Um, we're here with the women's team and the men's team this year. So it's been a big organization to get the trip together, but nothing on what we've got next year with, uh, with Camborne 2025 coming up. Fast That's approaching. It. That's it. So let's let's talk about the trip here first. What what is the uh, the idea of getting it together, getting your teams together, and then raising the money and sponsorships and getting from England to you know Butte, Montana? Uh, talk about that journey and and how hard that is to kind of get both teams here. Yeah, we're very fortunate that we've got good good sponsors that come back every year. Um, it's not my first year in this role, so I've got some good contacts I can ring up and say hi there. Good let's, for you. Uh, let's see what we can do. Um, but yeah, we've, we've trained all year since, since uh, September, at the start of our semester, get all the new guys in. That's, that's one of our biggest things is making sure we can get as many people at the mining games as possible. Yep. Um, this year, we're fortunate enough to bring a women's team and a men's team. Um, raising those funds, very thankful to Paddy and Venables, uh, Barminko, the CSM Trust, lots of, uh, lots of smaller sponsors there as well with Cornish yep. Metals, Cornish Lithium. It wouldn't be possible to be here without them. So obviously, we maybe take the chance to thank them on the broadcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we obviously we're based in Cornwall, so it's a bit away from a, a hub. Yeah. It's a, it's a nine-hour bus journey up to London, which is. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, so you're a little like us. You're kind of out of. Uh, let's, especially I don't want to say in British touch. terms. Especially yeah. in British terms, that's, yeah. that's a long drive. I mean, maybe not over here. We've uh, <laughs> driving up from Denver. Definitely put that into perspective for us yeah. through Wyoming and up. But yeah, no. So we had our, our flight, our, our journey up to London, which our our flight got cancelled in, so it was a two o'clock in the morning text. Sorry, sir, we uh, no longer have space on our flight. It's no uh. longer leaving. So that was uh, an interesting one to, to wake up to, really. <laughs> well, so what ha what happened then? Did you was it a later day flight in the day, or what what kind of uh, hoops did you have to jump through to get here? It was a long wait at the waiting desk. Okay. Uh, a lot of guys from British Airways come out to try and help us, but thankfully uh, United was still flying into Denver. Um, we had the snow last week in Denver, so it was trying a really bad timing to get in. Oh yeah. So, but no, we made it just about. So it's kind of how quickly can you can you be ready? We're like, well, we're here, let's go. <laughs> we don't need to wait. So yeah, but we were in Denver then uh, for the last couple of days. Uh, Liberty Resources, another um, uh, another sponsor of ours, they took us out. They looked after us. We've got a few CSM alumni out there, nice. and they really they really did take good care of us. Took us out, just show us the sights, kind of be a bit American for a couple of days, <laughs> make the most of being over here. And as, as I mentioned, drive up through the Butte. Uh, lovely scenery that was. It's quite different to anything we have. So it was, uh, yeah, really, really good fun. What, so as, uh, you know, you will be hosting next year. It, it falls on your shoulders and, and obviously everybody with you, but you're obviously the whole ornament in this thing. I, when you're walking around the grounds right now, uh, what what are the things you're stockpiling? What are the things you're going, we need this? You know, because you know, you're know, you getting ready. I, I can imagine you've already got a huge mental Rolodex <laughs> of things that are important when you host next year. Yeah, no pressure. I think that's the first time yeah. someone's put, put it on my shoulders. So thanks for that one. You're welcome. No <laughs> but, um, problem. That's what I'm here for. No, yeah, no. It's, uh, it's been a really, really well put together event here. We can see uh, you've had a lot of experience of guys who've been around. That's maybe where we struggle a little bit, the turnover. Our degrees are a little bit shorter. Okay. So you don't have the experience of people like Nick who've been around for eight years or whatever, <laughs> you know. So not, not a dig at him at all, yeah, I mean, but, you know, we I don't I mean, don't, he's don't the only guy who's hosted twice. So, exactly. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, so if we're not, it's, it's, it's good. We've already started looking at getting things in line and yeah. our sponsors are already keen and get just concrete things that take time, right? You know, that lead time. But seeing it all put together on a site like this, obviously every year it's, it's, someone does something slightly differently. So it's really nice that you say, pick off all the things that we've done and that you guys have done here really, really well. Maybe some things you haven't done so well we can pick up on, but yeah. hey, well, that's, no, that's, that's part works. of it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's how everything gets better. I mean, because you're you're not always improving on something that's great. Sometimes you're going, that is hot garbage. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do something completely different, and that's just the way of life. Yeah, exactly. Well, even the live stream stuff. I think this, you said earlier this is probably the first time we've done it at such a such a scale like this. So you're putting the pressure on us now to deliver <laughs> something next year, you know, especially something that's high standard. So we'll uh, we'll have to see there what we can for deliver there. Well, it's uh, I, I'm asking all our teams as you come in here. What are the events that you're like? We we cannot lose at this. We have to win X event. What what are the events you put pressure on yourself for? We're a big muck muck team. We are love you? the muck. Our women just absolutely smashed it. Sub three minutes. Hey. So they were they, they were flying. So hopefully they'll. 
they'll be up there. But yeah, as, as, a, as the blokes, we, we fancy ourselves on the mucking. Okay. That's, that's, we, we train with hard stuff, you know, none of this dirt, yeah. none of this fine stuff that you guys have. <laughs> no. We, as, same, similar to you guys, it's frozen half the year, you know. Yeah. We're going to pickaxe out to get through it. So <laughs> yeah, we, we, we back ourselves on the muck in the gold farm. There, yeah. there are two really. I, and I, I was able to watch you in hand steel yesterday, um, and you, you guys weren't messing around in hand steel either. I'm, I'm going to give you credit on that one because I'm not going to lie. I was kind of expecting you to say that, and the fact that you didn't, I'm going to go ahead and put you on it. Like you guys were on it yesterday. Yeah, no, we like we like hand steel. We got a good hand steel in your group this year. Um, yeah, we don't want to put the pressure on the hand steel now. You know, there's, there's, there's other, other guys are pretty pretty good on that one too. You know, we maybe don't have the size advantage that some of some of you guys do. So, yeah, but no, we're, yeah, we we like our chances all round. Why not? Let's back ourselves. Right? That's it. That's and, the way. And uh, again, uh, thanks for being here. I mean, uh, you know, it it takes a lot to get a team together, multiple teams together, get on a plane and get here with all the backers. Uh, you know, the, your sponsors to get here. Uh, and a lot of teams and a lot of situations might go. You know what? Maybe this year isn't our year. We'll look next year. And the idea that you're here. Uh, says a lot about your program, you as a leader, and, and a whole lot. So thank you for being yeah, here. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't miss for the world. This really is a highlight of our, of our academic year. You know, getting getting yeah. the guys out. It's, it's the first thing getting back in September. Right, where are we going this year? What's, what's the plan? Tell me the itinerary already. I'm like, hang on, lads, we've not had a chance to do this yet. <laughs> I, I, and I guarantee, you know, I remember the the energy last year going to Australia. You know, the guys are like, hey, guess what? Join mining. We're going to Australia. Yep. Um, and you dang well know next year it's going to be like, guess what? We're we're crossing the pond. We're we're over to Jolly. You know, so we're we're in England. Yeah, uh, and life seen, as we know it is good. Already seen some of that excitement already coming yeah. up to me. Like, no pressure next year, boy. <laughs> we're we're going to be good. <laughs> hey, we're very fortunate that we're Camborne has that standing in this mining industry, and, and we're very thankful for that. And we we try and do our best. We we come compete. We see the guys it's a brilliant opportunity you know you meet the same faces all yeah. around you know yeah so we, we like i say we wouldn't we would not be here something would have to go drastically wrong for us not be here we'll send a team wherever <laughs> hey you can be in timbuktu and we'll be there right i love it i love it that's the mentality we have at this joint as you well know and and that's certainly uh how you get through things so joe thank you so much uh, great to talk to you uh, swing back tomorrow we'll bs a little bit more uh, but uh, best of luck and and certainly great luck next year as well awesome thank you, right, much for thank time. you very much Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you take a look at the jack leg underway, we'll uh, talk about the teams, talk about the events underway and more. Stay close. Behind me is Jack Leg Drilling event here at the 46th International Collegiate Mining Competition in Butte, Montana. Our goal is to drill the longest hole in the three minute time period we are allotted. The steel that we are given is four feet long, so some individuals will finish the steel and they'll start another hole. The rules of the event are pretty simple. We have three minutes to set up our drill, so the drill will be based on a wooden block a few feet away from the face and we will pick the drill up, we'll put the steel in, we'll bring it up to the block, we'll set it up at the distance in which we are most comfortable with for either the low hole or the high hole. We'll have two members on each team, each will drill either one low hole, one high hole, or if they get through the steel, they get through the steel. And then we have to make sure that we go for an allotted three minutes of time and then we pull it out and we switch. We are required to have our steel toes, our hard hats, safety glasses, Gloves are recommended, not required, but they cannot be rubber. And we have to have ear protection because the drill is really loud. We suggest that you have double ear protection, so you have plugs and muffs, but some individuals feel comfortable with just plugs or just muffs. As we come back to Jack Leg, we have our uh, definition there. And as you take a look at our concrete blocks here as of right now, and out there on the jack leg is Missouri S&T as the women's team getting things switched around and ready to roll. Now, coming up at 1.30, we'll have a full slate. The only other thing that is happening right now, we do have the gold panning underway. South Dakota alumni team is in the gold pan. From there at 1.30, let's talk jack leg. At 1.30, we'll have the Wassam Wallabies. Uh, the women's team will be on the jack leg. Uh, what else do we have here? Across the board, mucking, Wassam Wallabies and the Arizona Mother Muckers. Uh, the women's teams will be competing in muck. Coming up, the gold pan has the Queensland Magpies. Uh, that is a co-ed team, gold panning starting at 1.30.
Uh, Swedes saw the Montana Orphan Girl, the women's team, taking on the Colorado School of Mines women's team. Uh, that is on the Swede Saw coming up at 1.30. We will make sure that our camera is on that bad boy. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, Wassum Wallabies women's team will be on jack leg. Then the track stand, we have a pair of co-eds that will be on track stand. The Arizona Cobras and the British Columbia UBC. That is uh, coming up at 1.30. And finally, Hand Steel has a pair of alumni teams as we'll have the uh, Mont Munkingtana alumni and the Arizona Midnight Meat Train. Both alumni is happening. And that is in Hand Steel coming up at 1.30. So as uh, we make our way through it, thanks for joining us here on the stream as it's made possible by Epi Rock. As you take a look at the jack leg as of right now, again, at the jack leg is the Missouri S&T Milfs as uh, they get ready. And gets stood up. Now get adjusted here. So again, thanks for joining us. As the other events get started here at 1.30, we'll certainly expand our field a little bit and give you a full taste of what's happening here on the campus of Montana Tech.
Hey, welcome back here once again as we take a look here. Starting at 1.30 on the main screen, you see uh, Swedesaw. And the Swedesaw is uh, one of our teams here locally as the Montana Orphan Girl is uh, competing. And also competing in the Swedesaw is the Colorado School of Mines, the women's team, as they will compete. And actually, we might move our upper... Um, we have the hand steel up in the right corner. If we can move that down to the bottom right, Barrett, that would be appreciated. Rather than the upper right, so we can see both of the Swede Saw contestants as they go. But let's go through the rest of what we have. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. So the upper is the Montana team, as the Montana Orphan Girl are the farthest team away from us, if you will. Colorado School of Mines women's team is the near side team in your main picture and we have hand steel getting ready to roll as well your hand steel contestants here this hour uh, are going to be the mon muckington alumni and the arizona midnight meat train alumni on hand steel from there the muckers we're going to have the wassam wombats and the arizona mother muckers both of those are women's teams competing in the uh, gold panning we have the queensland mama meg pies that is a co-ed team uh, out of queensland and from there, we have Jack Leg, the Wassam Wallabies. The women's team will be on Jack Leg. We'll keep you updated on that. And the track stand uh, is rolling as well. The track stand has a pair of co-ed teams, the Arizona Cobras and the British Columbia UBC. So that's everything underway. Again, on our main screen, you're going to see Swede Saw. We have the Colorado School of Mines here on the near side. The Montana team uh, on the far side wearing the black shirts. And down in the... Uh, bottom right corner, you see the hand steel, and we will uh, move around, but we'll keep it on Swedesaw for you here as the local ladies up top, Colorado School of Mines here on the near side. So again, Swedesaw. Each team is allowed five participants to compete in the Swede Saw competition using two bow saws. The members of each team will saw through a six inch by six inch chimper. Each member is given a four inch area to cut and cannot have a deviation greater than one and one half inch. Team to complete all five cuts in the shortest amount of time is the winner. And certainly this is one that has an incredible history in mining and early underground mines. Timbers were used as the main source of ground support to ensure that excavated areas would not collapse. The timbers were cut by hand to fit the area where they were needed. More effective methods of ground supports obviously are used today, and timbers are rarely seen in modern underground mines. So Colorado School of Mines close. The Montana ladies on the other side of the judge.
So the Colorado School of Mines ladies lining up for a picture is, boy, they really got after it. Tremendous finish for them in the Swedes saw. The Montana Tech ladies, the Montana Orphan Girl, looking to wrap up their fifth contestant here. Final leg, if you will. As I'll tell you, a couple of the ladies on the Colorado side just really, I felt like it was the, I think, second leg and the final leg were both just absolutely monsters. Just tremendous finish by them. I'd love to see the official time as they really got after it. So Swede Saw continuing. You see hand steel here on the bottom right of your corner. The two teams scheduled to go here this hour. We have a Mon Muckington alumni and the Arizona Midnight Meat Train, also an alumni team uh, here at 1.30. Some other activity around the field here as of right now. Uh, on the mucking side of things, the Wasson Wombats and the Arizona Mother Muckers are scheduled to go on the women's side. And we'll see if we can get a look at that here as we go. Uh, Gold Panning Queens, Lynn Magpies, a co-ed team scheduled to go. As we mentioned, the Swede saw was rolling. We'll switch over to take a look here at the hand steel. I wish, I wish there was a way that we could communicate to you the things that are being communicated to the hand steel contestants, trying to motivate them further. But uh, the FCC and every other government agency would shut us down in a heartbeat. I can kind of hear them out of the corner of my eye, or out of the corner of my ear, and uh, it, it, it's it's very interesting and it's really hilarious. I'm not going to lie. So hand steel continuing here. So coming up at two o'clock, gold panning will go again as Camborn will go. Uh, the Camborn women's team will go gold panning at two, and then the Montana Banquet Brigade, the alumni team. Uh, we'll go Jack Leg scheduled at 2 o'clock as well. So, again, hand steel underway. Thanks for joining us here. 46th annual intercollegiate games. And we certainly have to thank all our great sponsors. Epi Rock, the main one for the stream, is Epi Rock making it possible for us to bring you the stream here today and tomorrow. Uh, but, boy, we will uh, talk about the sponsors as this one continues as uh, just a tremendous amount of great people stepping up and uh, making these games possible here in the Mining City the first time in eight years. And as we talk to Joe, it'll go to Camborne and England next year. So hands deal continuing. It's Swede saw in the bottom right of your corner. And we'll keep you updated on all the activity here as we make our way through a Friday.
gonna sit to do a LinkedIn post. Yep. Is that okay? Do it. You can throw that stuff. No, I'll just put it on my lap. Are you sure? Yep. VP and business line manager from Epi Rock. Um, we sh er, uh, shared on LinkedIn. Good. Well, we're starting to get a little wind here in the mining city. We, we we were expecting it. We'll see what kind of wind stacks up here. So as we continue here, we get the jack legs set up. And uh, on our schedule, our next at 2 o'clock is going to be the alumni group here out of Montana, the Montana Banquet Brigade, scheduled to go on the jack leg. Gold pan will be Camborn. And then again at 2.30. Uh, we'll start to get everything else ramped up and rolling as all the events basically have an hour window to wrap up. The only ones that will go on 30 minute intervals are gold panning and jack leg. As uh, the, you can see our judges chatting there for the jack leg. I and the hand steel as well. Again, thanks for joining us here as uh, the stream made possible by EpiRock. EpiRock stepped up and said, uh, you know, we want to make sure this thing gets out. The uh, Montana Tech Mining team started talking about the idea of a stream, and it has uh, blossomed into reality here and certainly couldn't have done it without EpiRock, so we thank them for their help. As this is day one, women, co-ed, and alumni competing today here on the uh, the main floor, if you will, we do have other activity underway as well. The men's teams will take place tomorrow. And we have crew getting ready to roll here in the jack leg. And I do believe that's the Wassam Wallabies. Looks like our Wassam Wallabies women's team getting the jack set. And we will follow their progress here. Okay. 
also as the Wasom Wallabies women's team continue to get that jack leg set up. You can see in your uh, top right corner there, the Muckers are rolling. Let me see if I can get an idea who in that is. I can't see shirts. I can see helmets. The two on our schedule at 130 with the Wasom Wombats and the Arizona Mother Muckers. I lean towards that being Arizona, but honestly, cannot tell here right now. But again, thanks for joining us. We'll get some score updates as they start going into the system. Day one here as the women co-ed and alumni competing. The men's teams will be out tomorrow. We have a gorgeous day today. Temperature is expected to drop a few degrees for tomorrow. I'll tell you, we have uh, we've been graced with awfully nice weather here today. And again, uh, thanks to all of our sponsors for making this possible. So the cart being moved. And again, uh, just a couple things on the schedule. Again, the only two that go every half hour are gold panning and jack leg. As Cam Bourne is set up for gold panning to our immediate left here, and then uh, the Montana Banquet Brigade will take over the jack leg starting at two o'clock. Wasom Wallabies you see here on the jack leg. As it looks like they're about ready to start another here. Getting awfully close to bottoming out. Hand steel. And that looks like the Arizona squad, the Arizona Midnight Meat Train up in your upper right corner. And they will get this out and try and get another hole started here for the Wasom Wallabies. Intercollegiate mining games here in Butte, Montana. Trying to get that drill out.
So we take a look at the jack leg here as we get some measurements underway. I mentioned earlier this is obviously day one. The women's co-ed and alumni events are running. We have an alumnus here from Montana Tech. Serve. you'll introduce yourself first and we'll go from there. Sure, I'm Brian Farbridge. I graduated from Tech in 2012. How you doing? Good. Well, I mean, welcome on with us and, and welcome back to Mining Games. Obviously, it's been a little while. What, what does this mean to you to get these back here on campus? No, it's a lot of fun. It's a great facility that they've built here. You know, when I was doing it, we were still on the museum grounds. Since then, Scott and Chris and all the students have built this new facility. And it's looking great. It's been a great event so far. The the amount of work put into this is is crazy. It is. Uh, and and the uh, like I say, the grounds here are working out so well. Everything is set up so well uh, that day one has gone pretty much flawless to this point. Yeah, it's been good. We just finished up hand steel for our alumni team. Didn't break any hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> that that would been have good. been my first question. Uh, yep. So that that said, I mean, obviously these these games have a a, a thread to you. I mean, they they they're part of you. Uh, why do you come back as an alumnus and, and compete? Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great chance to get together with people we went to school with and see a lot of faces I haven't seen in a while and get to see if we can still do this or not. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that one towards the top of the pile? Yeah, it's somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, so from a, a, a spectator's perspective, uh, what do you come out, what do you like to watch people compete in, and, and what's your favorite, I guess, personally? You talked about hand steel, but what do you like to come out here and throw it down for? Jack Leg's probably my favorite. Right. I, I competed in that one in college and drilled this morning for our team. And Good for you. It's, uh, that's my favorite to watch. I, it, that feels like the, the point of pride for tech yep. almost across the board, doesn't it? It is. Having the mine on campus, all of our students definitely get good practice on the jack leg. And, um, it's something we take pride in and definitely enjoy. How is it? Uh, so when you look at the games now as opposed to when you were in school, kind of talk about that transition of, uh, you know, competing during school and then uh, as you get out and kind of what they mean to the industry. Sure. Um, so competing during school, obviously, you're taking it a lot more seriously, right? You're practicing every weekend through the week leading up to it. Here we show up, give it a give a couple events a try on practice day, and uh, <laughs> see how we do. So um, that part's gone good, though. We still remember most of it, and <laughs> good for you, survived and <laughs> mostly. Um, but no, and definitely great industry sport. Got a lot of companies out here. I'm with Nevada Gold Mines now. We're sponsoring the Gold Pan event. Um, got lots of other sponsors. It's good to yeah. see the industry support. All the schools have lots of sponsors. So, and, and it's great from an industrial side of this, where where industry coming is supporting these and, and seeing them on hand. You know, yeah. I, and, and being able to look at these kids and look at the industry. There, there's a ton of help, and these things don't happen without an awful lot of help. No, and it's you know it's great. You hear plenty on about your Gen Z and Gen Alpha and millennials and all that. But yeah. Definitely the students here are out here getting their hands dirty and working hard, so that's yeah. great to see. I mean, from an employer side of things, the, these are the you, you watch them get out here and get after it. Those are certainly the people that uh, you want working for you on a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, coming out, supporting tech, and, and obviously as an alumnus, uh, you know, throwing down for tech. All right. Look at you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day, man. <laughs> so, again, uh, as we get rolling here, we've got Hand Steel, the Arizona squad, and it looks as though uh, we'll get some other activity underway as well. So as the Arizona team goes through hand steel here, again, that squad is the Arizona Midnight Meat Train, the alumni. We were just talking to our own alumni uh, who wrapped up hand steel, the Mon Mucking Tana alumni. From there at 2 o'clock, we will have gold panning as Camborn will compete in gold panning. The Montana Banquet Brigade and alumni group here from Montana will go to the jack leg. We'll take a look at the jack leg then. And then, of course, at 2.30, every event will get started again and we will certainly keep you updated on the teams and uh, watch some of those events as they roll here. Day one of the 46th annual intercollegiate mining competition in Butte, Montana. We started the day with a little sun. We got some clouds rolling in, a little bit of wind, but as of right now, everything going off smoothly here in the mining city. Oh, 
tell you, um, I don't think that it'll be difficult to sell this dream. What's that? Well, like, obviously, everybody has. As you look to the right of your screen, you see the track stand teams getting after it. As back there in track stand, we have British Columbia and the Arizona Cobras. The Cobras, the nearest team to us. British Columbia, the far team, if you will. See the mucking carts to the left. And those will stay silent here for a little bit. Till the bottom of the hour at 2.30, we will get two teams out for mucking. as we continue here on day one. So as our 2 o'clock competitions get ready to go here, we'll have two as gold panning will have Camborn's team underway. The women's team will get in the gold panning arena. 
And then on jack leg here, as you see on your main screen, jack leg uh, will be our Montana alumni squad, the Montana Banquet Brigade. And as we mentioned, certainly the pride and joy here of Montana Tech and our mining program is the jack leg. And the alumni team getting ready to roll there. So from there at 2.30, again, we'll have a ton of activity as jack leg mucking pan Swede saw will get started as well with track and steel. And we will keep you updated on those. We'll get cameras across our concourse as well. So as we have jack leg here, you can see a little bit of our overhead drone footage from earlier today in the bottom right of your corner. Our thanks to Jess for uh, 
getting us the drone footage. How cool is that? I'm such a sucker for drones. She'll continue to give us uh, footage today and tomorrow as well. And you can see the grounds from the drone there as far as the hand steel. Just a great view of the grounds and the great work that this Montana Tech team has done. Again, these, uh, you know, these events every year are put on by the campus, but they are put together uh, by the mining teams. They're the ones who do all of the work. You know, your, your professors and your heads of the departments, uh, they are certainly there to help. They're there to lead the horses around, but uh, all the uh, kids in the mining departments are the ones doing the work. And I'll tell you, this Montana Tech team has done incredible work uh, to get to this point. So the Jack back underway here. And is again, uh, taking a look at our numbers here. That is the Montana Banquet Brigade, an alumni team. And that is on the drill. I'm going to do something with these. So we're about ready to be bottomed out. How quickly can you get it out and get another hole started here? Montana Banquet Brigade, again, a Montana Tech alumni team. This is certainly their pride is the jack leg. So coming up next on the jack leg, since we're here, we've got a co-ed team out of Queensland. The Queensland Magpies will be a co-ed team on the jack leg. And again, a full slate of activity started, uh, scheduled to go at 2.30. Mucking side all the way down at the other end of the compound, the Nevada, Mac, uh, the Nevada Mackie Muckers. I'm Polish, and the, those three words are really hard to say together. Uh, the Nevada Muck... <laughs> Mackie Muckers and also the Arizona Cobras will go on the mucking side, both co-ed teams. The Wasson Wombats, the women's team, will be gold panning. Uh, on the sweet saw, we'll have the uh, alumni teams from Arizona and also South Dakota. Uh, so two alumni teams on the sweet saw coming up uh, here in the next 20 minutes. Uh, the track stand, we have the Mont Mucking Tana alumni taking on the Missouri Tater Patch alumni. And then in hand steel, we have an alumni team and a women's team. The women's team is the Colorado School of Mines. And the alumni team is the Montana Banquet Brigade. So Jack Leg wrapping up. They get their time in. And they'll get some measurements and we'll get some scores here.
Hey, welcome back here once again. The 46th International Mining Competition underway in Butte, Montana on the campus of Montana Tech. Uh, a nice day here on a Saturday afternoon. We have Jack Leg uh, on the screen here on the stream right now. And we've been mentioning throughout the day and, and throughout this entire broadcast that obviously nothing happens without tremendous sponsors. Uh, and one of our sponsors is here with Orica, sir. If you'll introduce yourself and let's chat a minute. Of course, yeah. My name is Salvador Aguirre. I'm the tech services manager for uh, Orica in the U.S. I'm based out of uh, Indianapolis. Okay. I am uh, originally from Mexico. I started my career uh, in 2002 in Mexico. Orica being a global company has given me the opportunity to work, live um, in different countries. I started in Mexico, I moved to the U.S., then I moved to the Dominican Republic where I was the uh, operations leader on the big barrack gold mine Okay. there in the Dominican. Then I moved back to the U.S. and uh, currently living in, Indian, in Indianapolis. Wow, good for you. I mean, uh, that that is, uh, uh, and that's normal, it feels like. If you want to move, if you want to be see the world, uh, the mining industry is certainly a very good way to do that. Yes, it is. It's a small, it's a small industry, right? Yeah. No matter where you go, you're always going to see someone that you know. Yep. But, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's it's global. You know, we, we are at least Orica. It's uh, it's in more than 50 countries. Okay. You know, we have operations underground, surface, quarry, construction, uh, you name it. Yeah. What is so uh, as far as the industry goes when the mining competition rolls around? Talk about the importance of these games to Orica and to the industry. If you it's, don't mind. It's, it's super important, you know, to 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 be part of this, um, you know, and support the the future leaders, right? Yeah. You know, these kids here, they're having a lot of fun. They're getting to experience a little bit of what the real world is out there. And it's, imp it's super important for companies like, you know, like Orica to sponsor, be, be part of this, you know, because some of these uh, kids that, you know, are playing here with these toys are going to end up, you know, working for, for, for the real mining industry yeah. for companies like Orica in the I, future. I love that you, you refer to them as toys because I don't think most people would, but everybody here... <laughs> That's exactly what they are. Exactly. I mean, everybody loves to play with their toys. I don't care if it's the, the guys or the, the gals that are currently in school or the alumnus that are participating and they graduated 20 years ago. It's exactly what they are. You're it, playing in the sandbox with your friends. Uh, exactly, exactly. So it's 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 a great thing. It's a great experience. This is my first time. We're outstanding. Yeah, I never did this as a student in Mexico. And, uh, you know, being able to come here representing my company and, and see, you know, the, the, shark, the shocking competition was last night was something else. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's uh, trying to explain that to people is, is a little bit hazy. It's a little bit difficult, but, but it's it's wonderful. But it's a lot of pride. You yeah, there's know? a I ton mean, of pride. It, there was a lot. It was yep. real competition. I yeah. mean, it was real competition and uh, SNT won. So I'm SNT <laughs> alumni. So way to go. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, everybody here is having a good time, and it's a great. You know, I keep hearing the word family, uh, and I, I love that because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's if it's our Australian contingent talking about Butte or England or whatever. Like you mentioned, it, the idea that it's a small community, even though it's a worldwide web, we have a ton of people that you're going to run into no matter where you go. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I was I, I cannot remember exactly, but I was talking to someone yesterday. And uh, I think it was Scott, and he was telling me that they have two of the guys that are going to be graduating this year. They're going to be moving to Australia. Yeah. You know, so so you're saying it's it's a, it's, a, it's it's global. Uh, there's a shortage of you yeah. know of, of mining engineers, explosives engineers. Uh, Everywhere. Yeah, and, it's, and like I say, it's not just, you know, we're sitting here, obviously, we use the term mining a whole lot, but that whole spectrum, whether you're talking about uh, metallurgical engineers, you're talking even even into civil uh, and, and any, all those branches, yep. uh, you know, you don't have to be a mining engineer to be here and or to end up in and, mining. There are so many ways that you can get involved and, and really make a rich contribution. And, and that is a great point, you know, uh, what we do in Orica is so specialized. Uh, we do have, you know, from Rolla, there's an explosives engineering degree, but, you know, we, we hire people we have in, in, you know, in Orica on the graduate program. We have kids that went to school for civil engineering. We have geologists. We have, actually, we have an, um, what's this uh, major? Um, it'll come back to me. No, no worries. You're <laughs> you know right. what I mean? We have yeah. people. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to have the mining background. Uh, you know, but it's it's you get to learn yeah. when you are 
on the bench, yeah. on the field. And, right? and, yeah, and, it, and there are so many uh, poles that are holding up the foundation of the entirety of it. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just mining. There are so many other ways that you can be part of it yeah. and, and continue to grow. Aerospecial engineer. <laughs> we just go. hired an aerospecial engineer. There you he's, go. Uh, he's a site supervisor uh, training right now. There you go. Yeah. Well, it, this is, uh, I, first off, from, from a, a fan of these, you know, I, I've been able to come to multiple of these in the mining city through my years. I, I love the mining competition. Uh, and also, as a Montana Tech uh, person, uh, thank you to uh, Orica and, and to of all of course. our sponsors for making this possible because obviously it takes a lot of help and, yeah. and you're a great sponsor. The only thing that we're missing in these uh, games is playing with explosives because <laughs> that, that would be fun. I'm not going to lie. I, there are several here that I, I really love. Um, but I, I, like anybody, I would like to blow stuff up as well. Of course. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah, that, that we are missing that. We need yeah, to make that yeah. happen. Yeah, that's uh, that's the only thing that who, we're missing here. Who do we talk to about that, about blowing things up possibly? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. Yeah, it's going to find yeah, out. It's, uh, it's, good. it's interesting, right, because there's a lot of <laughs> young kids, uh, you know, willing, you know, to play with this. It's, it's, it's to me, uh, I'm not that old, you know, but seeing the energy that these kids have and, and the passion uh, you know, seeing the families here, seeing little kids, yeah. you know, uh, applauding and enjoying this is this is something else. I I really love the little ones here today, and I would assume tomorrow, with it being a Saturday and and a little bit more easy for people to get together as a family, I think we're probably going to see more kids. And I cannot imagine that these are not going to be lasting impressions made mm -hmm. on some youth that we might see in mining programs in, in 15, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, and I'm jealous as a as a father of a. Uh, Senior in high school, I really pushed for my kid to go to mining, but he was like, Dad, you have moved, we have moved nine times oh, in like 18 that. years. Like, uh, I'm going to go for cybersecurity. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm batting 500 because I have a youngest, you know, 14, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really pushing. I show him videos of, you know, the, the, the big mining equipment, you know, uh, the explosives. Yeah. The uh, demolitions, blasting, so we'll see. All right, well, good luck. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying not, this is going to come across as though I'm bragging, and maybe I am a little bit. I have a student, I have a senior as well, an 18-year-old that's graduating, uh, and she has chosen metallurgical engineering oh, here. Oh, good, excellent. So, so there we go. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid to say it too loud, though, because she might just be like, no, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I mean, you obviously know how teenagers' minds work. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much again hey, for the, uh, the help and the sponsorship and what you do for uh, mining in general. It's I appreciate a pleasure. It. I appreciate it. Thank you very hey, much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the jack leg on. We'll uh, talk about the teams here and uh, continue uh, as we roll up to 2.30. Again, coming up at 2.30, we have everybody getting back out on the field, and we'll give you those schedules in just a moment.
Well, as we take a look at mucking going on on the screen here right now, again, a ton of activity coming your way at 2.30. We'll go through all the schedule and all the events and all the teams that are participating here. Uh, but the 46th International Mining Competition underway in Butte, Montana. Uh, and again, we continue to talk about the fact that we cannot do this without tremendous sponsors. And we have uh, another one on hand. Ma'am, if you'll introduce yourself and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, thanks, Paul. G'day, everyone. I'm Renee, and I'm from the Barminko North America team in Denver. And uh, we're sponsoring six teams here, some from awesome. Australia, the WASM team and the Colorado School of Mines team and the Camborne team from the UK. Good so for you. Really excited to be here. Well, and it, it's great to have you here mm. in, in so many ways. The idea of sponsoring that many teams and, and investing that much into the mining industry uh, says an awful lot about what Barmingo is about. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's given me a fantastic career. I've uh, travelled around the world, worked on four different continents for the business, so I'm, I'm pretty blessed. And yeah, my, my kids are wanting to be mining engineers as well. I've got the love of travel. Wow, good for them. Yeah. I, you know, and that's, it's funny, there, there's been a couple through lines here today, and, and the, one of the first ones that jumped out was family. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea that the mining, you know, mining is, it's such a small community in so many ways, but it's worldwide, you know, so we have all these threads that connect us, uh, but it's a huge family. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you end up in Australia, you're going to find somebody you know. If you end up in England, you're going to find somebody you know. Uh, and, and all of that kind of coming together here today, that, that is one of the big ones we have seen. Uh, but the other one is travel. I mean, oh, that's the absolutely. one that we continue to talk about is if you're going to graduate in mining and get out there, you're, you're going to see a lot of the world. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the students that are here now, it's, they're our future. And they're making future connections with CEOs and senior people in organizations yeah. that they'll have for the rest of their rest of their working career. So, so. Renee, tell us uh, about today. What what is is have you been to mining comp before? Actually, this is my first uh, intercollegiate games. Okay, I was in Sudbury, Ontario, a couple of weeks ago at the Canadian mining games. Okay, um, very different. Um, really? Yeah. How so? Give us the rundown. What's what's the difference? I, I guess it was a lot more technical side. Um, okay. A lot about decarbonisation, sustainability. A lot of um, teams would get briefings in classrooms and work um, separate nice. and then come back and present to the team. Yeah. So it's uh, different, but, yeah. but equally, you know, this is a bit more outside. We're enjoying the, the fresh air and the fresh <laughs> bit of snow overnight. It's been fantastic. <laughs> well, you're, you're currently based in Denver, so this is not anything that is going to run you indoors anyway. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> um, yeah, our kids saw, saw snow for the first time in October, so... <laughs> Uh, we uh, we still run around in our underwear and, and get excited. Good for you. Good for you. And that's the attitude you have to take with it or else it will drive you to drink. Yes. And that, from a long history of that, trust me, that is the case. Uh, well, I'm Australian, so we love that. <laughs> hey, yeah, that maybe that wasn't the right analogy, was it? I apologize. Uh, Renee, uh, you know, from, from a uh, an industry perspective, um, with the sponsorship, not only of all the teams, but the games themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the importance. You know, I mean, obviously, everybody has a perspective of going, this is why we invest. This is why we're going to be a part of it. Uh, from your perspective, w what's the importance for Barminko, not only from the teams, but the games overall? Sure. Barminko and the broader Parenti business, we're a global business. We, um, we employ over 12,000 people worldwide, um, and we give opportunities everywhere. So we, we sponsor um, mining graduates through our graduate program. It's a pretty unique program. Um, and we take uh, a lot of students actually from, from the representatives this, this next few days. And uh, it's a three year program, it's hands-on. So we focus on underground mining in our part of the, the business, Barminko. And they do three months in each of the roles underground for the first 18 months or so. And then they get opportunity to work in a more technical space or planning space. Um, the unique, um, thing about our, our graduate program is we connect them globally with a one-on-one -on -one mentor. So through wow. the three-year program, they can get that commercial acumen, the art of negotiation, um, you know, personal mentoring with people who are in the industry, yeah. senior leaders in the industry actually, Paul. And um, so it helps them be successful at the end. So hopefully they can stay with us or we've got a great contact for a client. Yeah, yeah I, I think... It's so interesting. That's, you know, I keep continually talking about like a through line, but the idea of making sure that um, everything is, is helping the younger people joining. You know, that, that's the other through line is I've talked to several seniors here today uh, that, you know, this is their final mining games and the idea of going, 
them making sure that the incoming freshmen or the freshmen and sophomores that are currently in programs, everything is better for them. And, you know, that continues beyond schools and into the industry as well, which is, is pretty wonderful to see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Renee, I, I can't thank you enough. I, yeah, I, welcome thank to you. Buttes. And uh, what, so what's grabbed you so far? Obviously, you've had a chance to see some of them. What, what's the one that if you're, you're walking in tomorrow, what's the first one you really want to watch? I think I really like the track okay. uh, and the mucking. Right. Yeah, I think that's uh, yeah quite physical. <laughs> oh. um, the jack leg, yeah, you need your earplugs for that. Yep. But, uh, that's been quite fun to watch as well. Well, some, some of the ladies' teams here have been absolutely amazing. They get after it, don't they? And it's quite humbling being a female myself and, and seeing what they're achieving. It's uh, girl power. It's I, fantastic. You know, and I'm, I'm so I think I think Butte, Montana is a, is attached to the Jack Leg. It yep. feels like Montana Tech and Butte. I, I think we're all drawn to the Jack Leg. Yep. Uh, and then I had a niece who, uh, my my goddaughter, who was you know this tall. Mm -hmm. uh, which obviously you can't see on the stream, but if you know McKenzie, <laughs> you know how tall she is. Um, and she was a jack leg menace. Like she really? just got after it. And, and she's in Canada and in the mining industry right now. And um, yeah, I, I think jack leg is part and partial for me. Yeah. That well, it's heavy <laughs> enough, isn't it? <laughs> the way that they roll it around and yeah, uh, they throw yeah. it around, and you're oh, like, I yeah. probably couldn't even lift that thing off the ground. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, thank you. Thanks all for right. sponsoring Thanks, all the teams and, and obviously sponsoring uh, these events here this weekend. It means an awful lot. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. your time. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Uh, Renee with Barmy, ladies and gentlemen. As we uh, roll on through it, we've got mucking going on. It looks like the Arizona team is on the mucking. We've got hand steel in the corner as well. We'll give you all the teams and get you updated on everything underway. Is actually, we've got Swede Saw going. So we've got Swede Saw on the top right. We have hand steel in the bottom right and then mucking uh, on your screen as well. We'll uh, run you through the events and teams in just a moment. All right, so as uh, the day has gone on, the bulk of our events start at the bottom of the hour. So here at 2.30, we have a lot of activity, which you obviously see on your screen. Shannon Panisco joining me as I have the hiccup, so. <laughs> I, I do not have the hiccup. I have called in the A-team to take over for my hiccups. Uh, we have Swede Saw on the majority of your screen. Upper right, we show uh, the mucking going on and then hand steel in the bottom right. Let me give you the teams here as we go. So the uh, we'll start with the Swede Saw here. Swede Saw, we have two alumni teams, the Arizona Midnight Meat Train and the South Dakota Alumni Team. Uh, those are underway. You can see the Arizona team, the FAR team, the Orange and the Stripe. And this close side is the South Dakota side. The hand steel, as we take a look at who is underway there, we have a co-ed team and a, a women's team. The Colorado School of Mines women's team and uh, the Montana Banquet Brigade on the co-ed side of things uh, as far as the Swede Saw goes. Down to the hand, or that's the, the hand steel, my apologies. Uh, mucking, we have the Nevada Mackie Muckers as that is a co-ed team. Also, the Arizona Cobras, uh, another co-ed team there. Here in the gold panning, we have the Wassam Wombats. And uh, what was I missing? Jack Leg will have the Queensland Magpies taking over uh, in the Jack Leg here, which obviously you can tell by the lack of noise that the Jack Leg not running currently. No, not not running currently. <laughs> so hand steel underway. But just about everything else everything is going else, right Everything now. else is going. Again, everything is on... Uh, uh, basically an hour schedule. So as we look at the mucking teams here, this is the Arizona team. As as they load that cart, uh, they'll have an they have an hour. So from like 2:30 to 3:30, and obviously they're going to finish long before that. The only two that go every half hour are the jack leg and the gold panning. Uh, and uh, oh, they're moving the cart. They're getting it out. Yep, they are. So if we had three friends, not that you and I have three <laughs> friends, but let, I have three. Wait friends. a second. Let's say let's say our car. Let this here we go. Okay. Here, how about our crew? 
So okay. if we have our broadcast crew, the stream, how long would it take for us to, <laughs> to move to or muck? muck? To muck. <laughs> I think it. Uh, granted, it would end three of us in the hospital. <laughs> Me first. Uh, the mucking is the, one of the most painful events. I, I think that one of the appreciations that you have when you watch this is just how much work goes into oh. every single one of them. Whether that's physical or precision yep. or planning, um, I think that it is, I mean, these, these, there's a reason why we call this a competition. It's incredibly physical. Yeah. And uh, they're all really impressive. They get after it. Yes, and, they And do. They're, they're here to have fun, but it, it is a competition. And Absolutely that, that is. is certainly one of the big words. So as we look here, we go to the hand steel. And uh, taking a look at our hand steel teams, we have the Montana Banquet Brigade, an alumni team, and the Colorado School of Mines women's team. And that would appear to be who that is here. Uh, Colorado School of Mines destroyed Suisaw. They were so good. They were. Their second leg... And like their fifth leg, it felt like we're just monstrous. But the Colorado School of Mines do an excellent job there. Uh, and they're on hand steel. As you can take a look, our, uh, we have panned over for track as well. As a track stand, the teams on track stand right now, we have the Mon Muckingtana alumni and the Missouri Tater Patch, okay. uh, both alumni. Uh, and they're down there at the far end of our complex. Yeah, it's nice to see the alumni contingent come back, not just from Montana Tech, but the other schools that have... Uh, an alumni team, an alumni presence. It's pretty awesome. That That's the one, you know, for, for your home team, you had better. I mean, it, to put it bluntly. We like, hope so, You certainly. had better. Yeah, yeah, you'd better have alumni teams if you're hosting. Um, but to, to go on the road and travel, to yep. compete in an alumni facet, like that's that's where high five should be. I mean, all high five should be granted anyway. Uh, but the idea of going on the road and competing in an alumni fashion in that sense is a big deal. Yep, absolutely. And I think that it's fun to see as far as the competition today. Um, I think that it'll be fun tomorrow as well with the men's teams. It, it's it's a it's a full day. It is a full day. I mean, and they have been they've been going hard and they've been going strong, and um, it'll be fun to see what the end results are. Well, again, we are here the 46th annual intercollegiate games as the mining games continue here in the mining city. We've had good crowds throughout the day, and you know tomorrow with a Saturday we might have a few more people in. We'll see weather is going to change a little bit tomorrow as well. Uh, hopefully Mother Nature will play fair and, and we're okay uh, as we get rolling tomorrow. Well, and even if not, it's layers, right? Yep, that's it. Yep. That's the situation. Jack leg back underway, as you see on your main screen here. Looks like the Queensland Magpies. A single driller here. Trying to get it set. The It's funny where, you know, talking to different schools and different programs, about what is important to their school or what's a win. Kind of what, what their their preferred event or yep. their, their special event is. Yeah, I agree. It's been interesting as the day has gone by. To your point, I think that there's always been a special pride as far as the Montana Tech teams and Jack Lake. And so it's fun to see when somebody says mucking or track stand or hand yeah. steel. Um, that's what makes the, the games interesting, <laughs> right? I, I love when Joe from England was talking about about mucking and and it not was so only romantic. oh it was beautiful like he just talked about it like it was it was just a, it was it was it was poetry it was but he also kind of threw a dig at us where he's like you know we aren't <laughs> we aren't throwing you know sand and really nice little peat gravel we're throwing rock <laughs> it's like I love you Joe I mean, I, that that was good I think a, a little bit of pride and bravado yeah. and some, some little trash talk at times is yeah good. that's a good thing yeah. that's a good thing 46th annual inter collegiate games again uh, thanks for joining us here on a friday we'll be here all day tomorrow as well and we still have a, a couple hours left of activity here today we'll go ahead and let you watch things going on here track stand top right jack leg bottom right and of course you see the hand steel continuing uh here in butte montana